Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I am going to be working on this 2018 RAV4. Um, it is one of my daughter's cars and it's got a little problem. So one of the things that um, a lot of these cars come with nowadays, and I have a 2017 RAV4 and it's got the same thing, um, but she's got a lot more miles on hers than I have on mine. <clears throat> and these have these power lift tailgates now and so they're just not normal struts that open and close them by hand they're powered struts they have little electric motors in them and uh, when these go bad um, they're a little more expensive to replace so I'm going to open this for you and I'm going to show you I'm hoping that you'll be that the camera will be able to pick this up but I'm going to So, uh, if you could hear that, these things have started to squeak a while ago, and that is one of the uh, that is one of the signs that they're wearing out. Now, one of the problems when these things wear out is they usually wear out at a different rate. So they start opening with different power and it can twist the whole tailgate. So if you're starting to have this problem, it's something that you want to go ahead and get changed. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is we got to get all this trim off back here because again, these are powered so they plug in and the plugs are under this. So you need to get this trim off. So if you have a trim panel tool remover, you know, so you pop that in there to get that started. And then work your way across. Uh, oh my God. They, there we go. They will want to be tough. And then always look and see if you get all of the clips out. If you notice, this clip is missing right here. It is right here. So it is impossible to get this back onto this basically with it in. So you want to get the clips out that stay in. So again, this is when you want to have a, a panel tool, something like this, that makes it real easy to pop that guy out. And then the reason this is so easy is because there's a slot right here. So then with it off the car, you're able to just snap it right back in. Now it'll line up and that'll all snap. This will pop right back into place. So we'll get that off. So the next one, we just want to work around. There's two little pieces. There's a piece here and there's a piece here. So around the, the rear window. Now these are loose a little bit, so don't need the tool here. You just want to keep working your way around. There we go. So this one just has two little plastic clips and these clips are right there. So same thing. You really want to get these clips off and let me show you what those look like. This is a different type of clip. There we go. So this kind of clip. <laughs> so a little. So that looks like that. So it will literally clip right over. You see this uh to get it where the camera can see it best so so you see this uh, and there's a little hole in there where there's a piece that snaps into that and then just push over kind of spread it and then snap it back into place and now it will now it will go and snap in when you're ready to so on this one though they both stayed in the car 
Now, one thing, be very careful when you're doing this because you don't want to be pinching this and push it in through the hole into the, the window frame because then you're never going to get this thing out. So we're going to go ahead and snap this bugger back on there too. And we'll move on to the other side. There we go. So both those are back on. Okay. Before you put the trim back on too. So there we go. And now that side's ready. So once you get all these, we got to go ahead and get the big panel off. So since we can kind of get our hands off under this piece, let's just start pulling. And these clips, these are going to most likely, I haven't had this off before, but they will most likely be this type. And so they, they're in there a little bit more. So a little more firm pull to get it off. You can kind of work your way around and you get your hands under it. They will pop. There we go. And there goes the clip. So this is the same thing. You wanna you wanna check this. We know one of them came off right away because it hit the ground. So there's one that's missing there. Oh, we got two here that are missing. And the rest are rest are on. So yeah, every one of these clips on here is the same kind that was on this little piece that we first took off. So let's go ahead and pop these two guys off real quick. And we'll be ready to roll. After getting all the panels off, you're going to want to come under and you're going to find this wire right here. You're going to see two these two connectors and you kind of see the, the two pieces going to this edge over here. So the one with all the wires right here, this is your main power. And then the one with just a couple small ones, this piece right here, this is your sensor, the wires to the sensor. And if you actually look, there are, here's the sensor right here. And then there's a couple more. There's a sensor right there. And uh, uh, where's another one? There's a couple more there. Oh, there's one right there. So, so there's those sensors there and that's what those wires lead to. So you're going to want to go ahead and disconnect those and they're on both sides. So here's the ones to the right side. And then we'll be able to fish out the sensor piece because this whole, this whole plastic piece right here, this all has to be taken out so we can get the sensor piece out and and then get to the strut because you see this is bolted behind it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start by unclipping these two guys. Use my little screwdriver here to help. There's that one. And now that we have the power disconnected and the sensors disconnected, 
let's go ahead work on these little tiny sensors I'm just trying to once I get the edge in under it trying to kind of work around oh, there it goes oh I'm not gonna lie that's not what I thought that was gonna look like oh. <laughs> it's just a plastic clip uh, huh. I thought it was gonna be something more to it so let's go ahead and get that. Like I said, just be, just be gentle when you're prying them out. They all came out okay. Next, we need to go ahead and take out these eight millimeter nuts and then the whole sensor of this whole cover sensor cover thing should come off. I'll make sure I'm not blocking anything for you guys. And if any of you follow me, you'll know how much I love my Milwaukee power ratchet. So Since we already disconnected that, we can go ahead and pull this completely out. And there is our, there is our sensor piece. So this is, this is metal. And you can see the sensor wire running right along there. So... Now what the sensors are for is just, this tells the door if it gets jammed or there's something in the way, it allows it to reverse much like a garage door does. So, I'm gonna go ahead and set that in there. Now, now we can get to everything for the strut. So we can get to these two nuts before but now we can get to these two nuts. So also take, you know, take a, a mental picture or take a picture of it and notice the orientation of this right here. So, because it can only go on one way. So, let me get out the new piece and I'll show you. These are marked left and right, guys. So let me get the new one out and we'll take a look at it. The boxes, I, I couldn't tell from the part number which was right and which was left. But this number right here is the left one. It was the first one I opened. And the way that you can tell is that... Let's see if I can... Oh, there it is. So you can see the L on the brackets and it also gives the direction of the bracket. So you know that this goes this way because the arrow is pointing up. So don't, don't forget that the tailgate is open right now. So this is, this is up <laughs> in this direction. So this will go on right there. So it comes with all new all new hardware and stuff. Now, what you have to be careful of is you want to get the orientation right because once you snap the, the new strut on right here onto this ball, 
the the odds of you getting that off without damaging it are basically slim and none. So make sure that you look at the orientation of this guy before you put the new one on. So here is the new strut and here is the here is the small piece too and it also where is it there it is it also is marked with an L and an arrow but make sure you don't snap those on so and I guess the easiest way to remember it would be that where the wiring harness comes out of it is at the bottom so because if you put the wiring harness up here you're in trouble so let's go ahead next step let's take off all these bolts and let's get this sucker off i'm going to go ahead and take off these two first so that this can swing down and then it'll give me clearance to get to that one one thing i forgot to mention and almost forgot to do take that last bolt out is you want to go ahead and support the hatch so get something measured out so that it takes the weight off before you take all these out so Now, I should be able to, there we go. Now I've got all the support on this piece, this two by four here. So now I can get to that nut right there. Actually, let's go ahead and remove this seal. Let's take the wiring harness out. And then we're down to the, the final piece. There we go. So there it is, guys. There's the old worn out one. Yeah, okay. So. Installation is the exact reverse of this. But you've been watching me. You know I always take advantage able to clean something if I remove it so especially when you won't have the chance again your daughter's rev could use a good detailing but that is supposed to be up to my son-in-law now not up to me anymore okay so let's get our new brackets so we'll use the same hardware and remember it's got the arrow up so this is up so it's going to go just like this go ahead and started there is these did have like loctite on them there's really no reason to put more on it they will actually kind of sink back up in there and I would as just a uh,
precaution, take a look and just make sure that we've got our arrow in the right direction, which I see we do. And as a little clarification too, left, right is how you're looking at the car from the back to the front. Left is the driver's side, right is the passenger side. So this is our left side here. So now we've got our lower mount, or I guess our upper mount in a sense. <laughs> so, um, so we've got our arrow up there. So we'll go ahead and do that. And if you're really unsure about orientation of things and stuff, then, um, you know, just take, take pictures beforehand. You can also look at the opposite side, um, you know, do one side at a time and look at the opposite side and know that you're doing it properly. So, okay. Let's go ahead and snug these guys down. I'm gonna get a little extension here. There we go. They're snug down. So now we can take our new our new strut. We want to pop out the the little uh, covers. And remember, once you pop them in, there's no turning back. So your harness, wiring harness, is going to go to the bottom of the door. So I'm going to go ahead and before I do that. I'm going to feed this through. Get it to where I want it. Got a new grommet there. But now, let's go ahead and get this orientated first. Okay. So, it's going to go just like this. And then this piece actually ties right in here. There's a little clip that's going to go into this hole. So, so let's go ahead and there we go. Got that one snapped on. Now we'll snap this one on. Pop the door open just a little bit more. That just goes to show you probably how tired those were. So, okay, so we got this run through. Now we can go ahead and push the clip in there. There's another clip right here. There we go. And then, let's kind of work this grommet in. There we go. So, there we go. And that is all back together. Now let's go ahead and install the sensor back in. So we'll start with the wire. I'll feed that through. Kind of get it in its position that it should be in. There we are, hopefully like that. So I'm gonna pop one of these uh, sensor clips back in. There we are to help hold it.
kind of tucked up under here for this one. A little trickier to get to. tighten those so we finished up with the left-sided one so now I'm just gonna do the right one real quick and just kind of do a time-lapse one trim on. Let's give it a little test and make mm -hmm. sure that make sure it works. everything is working properly. It's quiet. Yeah. Let's see if the sensors all work. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah. It's weird because I didn't realize how how bad noisy it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. That's why yeah. when I heard it that first time, I was like, whoa, I didn't yeah. realize, because I don't open Katie's hatch. Right. Well, I mean, it's just one of those things where it just gets worse, you know, over yep. time. And so, yep. you know, you know, it's not until you actually see a good function when you're like, yeah. oh, geez. Well, and I know what our sound's like. That's true, yeah. And that's why I was like, whoa. So, yeah. yeah. Well, there we have it, guys. Yeah. Completely redone. Now they're quiet and operating as they should. All the noises you hear are just the motors, the electric motors, not the horrible squeaking that I demonstrated for you before. So now, the only thing we have to do is put our trim back on. So, go ahead and start lining this up. I love it. Uh, go another job well done so thanks for joining me today so I've got everything buttoned up and finished so I thought I would just do a little comparison from the beginning when I opened it and you could hear 
how noisy it was. So let's go ahead and do that so you can hear a comparison. Notice, no squeaking, no nasty noises, nice and quiet. So, and these are solid. Notice no noise. The other ones were, were horribly squeaking when we did that. So, so they are nice and quiet. So this is not a bad job to be able to do. It's a more expensive repair because of what they are. And it made me think. So this is my one of my daughter's cars. And my son-in-law and I were talking. And it made us think if there was ever the possibility if somebody wanted to do a manual strut on these. I know the more base model did not have the power door. Um, but I don't know that answer. And so if anybody knows that answer, I would sure love if you would comment um, about it and bring up the subject and if you know the part numbers or something like that because somebody might not want to spend as much money as it costs for these and maybe would be fine with the power with the manual option the only thing that I'm not a hundred percent sure about is with the manual how does that work with the electronic system so when you reach under the handle and release it it triggers these triggers a latch to unlock and then it triggers these to power so with a manual one my thought is is that it'll still trigger the latch to unlock and then can you just lift with yourself if you have the old-fashioned manual struts but I would love to know and I'm sure a lot of other owners would love to know if that is possible and uh, if it is if anybody knows what the cost of the manual ones are Hey, kind of throw that out. Um, I will do some research too to see. Um, and for some people, if they don't want to spend the money to replace these, that might be a less expensive option. So just food for thought. So anyways, thank you much, guys. We will continue to have fun next time. In quiet bliss. Oh, it's beautiful. Damn, I do good work. <laughs> <laughs> this was helpful. If you guys like this kind of content and stuff, sure appreciate if you would subscribe, like, share, comment, do all the good stuff that the algorithm loves you to do. I'd sure appreciate it. And until next time, guys, I'll see you down the road.